So this video will take a closer look at the Fujitsu Futro S940. I got this off eBay, brand new. I believe he still has more of these available. Of course, I can link it down in the description below. One of the reasons why I wanted this one here is because I want to build a PFSense firewall. And this is, I believe, the only one that is completely passively cooled and still has a PCI Express slot built in. So you can actually install a dual or quad Intel NIC, which is preferred for PFSense and also is brand new and have the Intel J5005 CPU, which is probably one of the more efficient quad core CPUs on the market, at least for PFSense. And for me, it's definitely fine enough. I have a one gig connection, so hopefully I can get that throughput with this machine here actually running some VPN. But anyways, in this video, we'll just go through the hardware. I've not seen any pictures or video of this specific model. If you take a look at the specifications on the Fujitsu PDF datasheet, it actually mentions a motherboard, which looks kind of feature rich with two SATA plugs, a times four PCI Express slot and so on and so on. But I believe this is actually a cut down version of that. How cut down it actually is, I'm not really sure. We'll find out in this video here. I've seen some photos of the same model, but just with an end at the end. So 940N, definitely a cut down motherboard with only a times one PCI Express slot on board. I have a feeling this one will have the same, but again, we'll investigate in this video here. So as you can see here, totally brand new, still sealed. And this is the Futro 940 with DDR4 RAM. So this specific model here does have four gigabytes of memory, 32 gigabytes of storage. I'm not really sure if it's internal or external power supply. I believe it is external because you can see a nine volt, to 65 watt. No mouse, CMOS, it's set. I do have the password so I can unlock the BIOS, but we'll not really get into the BIOS in this video. Just a standard, I believe, American Megatrend BIOS. We'll just go through the hardware. So let's cut it and see what we actually get here and there we have it computer here and of course accessories here so let's just remove this accessory box and as well as the computer have a closer look at it let's just put the computer to the side for now and first off let's just have, have a look at the accessory box and see what we actually get included here and if there's a power supply or not included we are opening it upside down to get some instructions, power cable, power supply, an empty bag, I believe that was housing the little plastic feet. And that's all we get, this big box here. Not really that well packaged, but just sliding around in there. So for power supply, it is external, because the seller mentioned both internal and external power supply. So I just took a chance on it, bid on it, and I got it at a pretty good deal. But anyways, you can see 90 degree plug in one end, and the power supply here is 19 volt, 3.42 amps, and of course 65 watt, as advertised on the box. I can't really find it anywhere on the label. And it is a center positive plug, but I believe it's pretty standard plug. So you can probably easily get a new re replacement power supply if this one fails at some point. You get the little plastic feet, so you can stand it upright or you can lay it down, but you should probably uh, always use the feet because it will raise the system up a little bit from the actual table or shelf or wherever you keep it. So it will suck a little bit air through because it is passively cooled. And we also have a look at how we actually attach those a little bit later in the video. I believe that's what's supposed to be in this empty bag, those feet. It's just kind of sliding around in there. And other than that, we could get some paperwork and a power cable. So of course I live in Europe and I believe these computers are mainly found in Europe, Germany to be specific, because Fujitsu is apparently a German company, or at least it's manufactured in Germany and so on. But anyway, get a pretty high quality power cable, rather long cable, I suppose, as well. And a quick start instructions. So of course, unpack it, set it up and plug it in. <laughs> That's pretty easy and some warranty information, I believe is in German. I don't speak German, but anyways, that's the accessories. Let's have a look at the main star of the show here and get a little bit closer actually, like so. Comes nicely packed in this beautiful bag here. It is an industrial computer, so it's not really something they have paid attention to actually, like being a nice packaged computer and so on. For the end consumer market, this is just Practical, but here we have the computer, of course. Brain spanking new, that's definitely nice. I like that, so you know it's full history. 
And definitely you can see it in there, it does have the time one slot instead of the times four slot. It's definitely a bummer, and yeah, very cut down, no SATA plugs or anything like that. But you can see a lot of ventilations all the way around. The same thing for the bottom here, you can see a lot of ventilations. So it will kind of suck a little bit air through. The heat will of course rise, and you can of course keep it upright, or you can keep it like this on the table or whatever. But let's just go through the hardware first here. You can get this in many different variants, with one that has power over Ethernet for instance. So you can power it on an Ethernet cable alone. You can also get one with the built-in power supply. We'll just use this bracket here, low profile bracket, and there will be a power supply inside this compartment here. But this one does not have that, and I'm happy about that definitely. You also have legacy mouse and keyboard. PS2 plugs do have four USB 2.0 on the back. We do have one real tick NIC, and you can see here there's also possible to get a model with a secondary NIC. Not seen any of those in the wild, but probably you could jerry rig something in there. You can get some of those M.2 NICs and maybe get it to fit there. But you have two display ports, you also have two COM ports or serial ports, and you also have to course the power plug there. It definitely have the same design aesthetics as the previous models, so the S930 and the S920. S920 you can get that very cheap and also a very good computer for PFSense, but this is twice the performance at lower wattage, so I think definitely worth it in that aspect. But on the front here you can see you have two USB 3.0, you have a microphone in, headphone in, power plug, and you can also get this with a smart card reader if your company uses that. On the bottom here is actually where you mount the feet. Let's actually try that now. I believe it doesn't really matter which way you mount them. There is no left or right feet. And you kind of just have to plug them into those holes there. You can see there is a bit raised plastic inside there. And then you just squeeze in this plastic in the middle there. And of course those plastic tabs here will squeeze outwards and that way it won't really come out. I'm not really gonna do that because I'm not sure I can actually get them out again once I have attached them, but very easy to do so. And of course do the same in the other side here. And like I said, I think these are exactly the same, so there's no left or right. On the bottom side there, I've just covered my serial number, but you can of course get some information about the product. And you can also use the feed here in the same way. Definitely should do so because it will raise the system up a little bit like a finger's height, so it will yeah, get a little bit of ventilation because it is completely passively cooled. Definitely need some, I would say. And that's pretty much it. Exactly like I said, the same design and so on as the previous model, so nothing really new there. The exciting thing happens on the inside, so let's just get into it. There are two screws here on the back, and you need to remove both of them to actually get the lid off. And once you remove the screws, you need to remove the lid in the front here, or pull it towards the front, so not towards the back. And then of course we have removed the top lip, put it over here, have a closer look inside. So yeah, definitely a cut down version of the full fledged uh, version of this motherboard. So you can see there's a lot of solder points here, or areas where you can actually solder plugs. I actually have like an M SATA or a mini PCI Express, and there was also two SATA plugs, and this is only a times one slot, which is a little bit unfortunate. Still is enough for a quad NIC in theory, but you only have times one bandwidth, so not really sure if they can run into some limitations, but up to four gigabits per second or 500 megabytes per second. You can transfer through this little plug there and you can actually mount larger cards in there because you can see there's a hole in the end. So you could, in theory, I believe, maybe hook up to like an eight times card in there or 16 times card because there is room for it there. But of course it will only have the physical bandwidth of times one. My specific model comes with the 32 gigabytes of storage and it is an inner disk one, SATA of course, but you can of course replace this. There's no standoffs for like larger drives, so you have to supply that yourself. We also have an M.2 slot for A and E key, for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth card, but you can actually also get an adapter for this. Either you can use it for a riser cable, but you can also get it to adapt NVMe SSDs. Again, you're limited to only one times bandwidth and only one DIMM in this specific device, so four gigabytes of memory. Not really all that much. I'm gonna upgrade that. I'm gonna try 16 gigabyte. I believe it's officially supported. And the heatsink looks like it's the, exactly the same as the S740. So this does have a J, what is it, 4101 CPU, so the cut down version of the J5005. I think it is exactly the same CPU cooler on both of them. So you won't really get anything bigger on this one, but. They're pretty equally spec, so 10 watt both of them, so should be 
getting equally hot as well. Of course, we have the speaker there. You can easily remove that as well if you want to and remove this entire bracket down here. You could also power it over this four plug. That's kind of nice. Like remove the motherboard, put it in another case. You can actually still power it over a pretty standard plug. You have an internal header for a USB 3.0. So you can connect those and you can also get these with USB Type-C on the back. I believe it plugs into this plug here. Of course, you have the battery for the BIOS and various onboard chips there, but you can see definitely a lot of solar points there for various things. It's a little bit unfortunate. Had it had like two SATA plugs and so on and so on, it would have been kind of nice. So you can just remove this motherboard, put it in another machine and build a nice little NAS server, for instance. But you don't even have like fan headers, so you cannot plug any fans into it. Definitely a little unfortunate because you can actually have a 2.5 inch hard drive here. It's pretty easy to plug it in, had it just had the power plugs on the motherboard. And the earlier models, the S20, did have the full flash motherboard, so had a SATA plugs and power plugs for the SATA and so on and so on. But the newer models, maybe because of this chip shortage, removed pretty much everything. And I'm not really sure what this plug is actually. Almost looked like an old school floppy plug. And you also seem to have a USB 2.0 header right here. Let's just try and actually install a network card in here. See how well that will work. Remove the bracket here. So I do have this super micro card. This is a pretty old dual NIC card, but still should be fine for this specific setup. And I made a little adapter here. It's just the cable is so long. And this is what's all I had lying around, but this is just a riser cable. Hopefully it will fit. I just put some shrink wrap over the end here and folded the cable in so it won't like hang loose in there. Let's just see if my measurements are actually right and plug it in and see if it will work. Let's just plug the network card in. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit on the tall side, but that should be easy fixable. But that's definitely a solution. So you can just use one of those riser cables. You can get them very cheaply on Amazon or eBay and so on. I can link to some of them down in the description below and plug in a dual NIC. I wouldn't go quad NIC, even though you could. You do have the bandwidth, but still only times one. You can see you are missing a few plugs there. So could limit a little bit in up or downstream of your network if you are fully saturating this plug here. So dual. I will have no problem with that in this system, but I'm still not sure I'm going to use this because I do also have Dell Wise 5070 extended, but those just have an active fan. So you can expect a little bit of noise, but also dust collection there. So I need to clean them from time to time. I really like the fact that this one is completely passively cool. That was one of the reasons why I just wanted to get this, but man, I'm a little down over the fact that this only has a one time slot. But anyways, that was just a hardware overlook of this specific system here. So if you're considering this for, yeah, like I said, a firewall or server of some kind, you know the hardware limitation of this board here. I would recommend it if you can live with the limitations. Pretty easy to upgrade the memory, pretty easy to upgrade the storage as well. And you also have a second M.2 slot. You can use various adapters to do stuff there. Cause I use it with a, another power supply built in. I use it in another case, so you can build a little NAS server, for instance. You can use the PCI Express times one slot, get a SATA adapter there, as well as the secondary M.2 slot. You can also get dual SATA adapters for that. Then you, of course, just have to think about the fan controller. If you want to mount like hard drives inside a case, you, of course, you'd have some active cooling, but there's no fan here, but you can, of course, plug in various things to the USB plugs there and power it that way. But anyways, that's all you get in the box. And that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.